Look at the size of the rim on that sucker. Gary Silo, Gold Motor Canada. I picked this bike up at Canadian Tire, a local department store in Canada. Some nice fat tires on it. Disc brakes front and rear. So we're going to be converting this to electric. I'm going to be changing the brake levers with the ones we have. Looks like I'll have to put a thumb throttle on here because it's got a twist shifter. So with the fat bike kits we have, we have 135 front and 195 rear. So pretty much any fat bike you buy, we're either going to have a front wheel that'll fit for you or a rear. So in this case, I have a 135 front that I'm going to be putting on here. So it should be a nice, easy installation. Here's the uh, fat bike wheel. It's going to be a front. It's got a monstrous rim on it. And it comes with a box of goodies here. Uh, this kit has a twist throttle. I'm going to switch that over a thumb. So I've got the bike upside down now, and to remove the tire, it's super easy. You just undo a nut on each side. Okay, now I've dropped the wheel in there. It fit perfectly. I noticed there's an extra washer on this side in case you need it, I guess. And uh, over here, it's right in there, perfect. So I'm going to pull it back out. This is just a dry fit, of course. Put the tire on it, and put a disc brake on there, and then put it back in. I just want to make sure everything's going to fit perfectly before I continue. Definitely a nice fat tire, 26 by 4. First step is to get the air out. Looks like a pretty easy job to get the tire lever in there. Got to be very careful you don't pinch the tube. Okay, so I have the tire loose all the way around. Now it's out. And it wasn't too hard to get it out. I basically just pushed the valve right down through the rim until I had the valve out. Then I reached inside the tire and pulled the valve out of the hole. I see on the rim, there's this large rubber protector here that protects the tube from rubbing on the spokes. And you can see already, there's little bulges in it where the spoke heads were rubbing on it. So you definitely want to put this on before you put your tube on because the heads of the spokes are right there. And when I look at our rim, the spoke heads are receded inside there. So I won't have the same problem that one has. But uh, definitely going to put the rubber on there anyway. It is odd that ours are receded. I guess ours are a nice double wall rim. And this one here, even though the rim looks identical, the spoke heads are definitely sticking out. So when you look at the tire, it normally has an arrow on it. And this is which way the tire will rotate. Also, I'm only going to be putting 20 PSI in here. That's really surprisingly low. But I guess because it's a fat tire, you get a nice soft ride. I've mounted the rubber around the outside on the new wheel. And of course I have a hole lined up for the valve for air. Putting the tire on top of the rim. Tire all the way around, I have the bead inside the rim. Tube inside. I just stuck it in at the one end where the valve is. I got the valve through the hole now. So now I'm just going to lift the tire up and tuck the tube in very gently all the way around. Now, once you get the tube inside the tire, it pretty much just falls in place. And it's just a matter now of putting the outside in. Now, the tire is on all the way around. I'm just going to go around and keep squeezing it like this all the way around a few times just to get the tube seated properly. And then I'm going to air it up. Another thing to point out, too, is there's this line on the tire itself all the way around. And you want to try and get that tire, that line lined up at the rim all the way around perfectly as you air it up. Get the tire on nice and straight. Now I've got air in the tire, nice and hard. I put 20 pounds in it like it said. And I guess I'm probably about 20 minutes into the project now. And I have the wheel off so far and the tire changed over to the new motor. And now I'm going to put the disc on. I'm going to take the disc off of this one. Might as well reuse it. It's got six Allen screws there I'll just remove. And this is where you got to be careful. you got to watch these Allen screws aren't too long. And I'll show you more about that in a moment. Okay, so I took the brake disc off the other motor, put it on here. It also has a directional arrow on it. I checked it with the tire. It's going in the same direction. Actually, this is pretty much a rule of thumb. 
for a brake disc. It is on this side, there's the arrow and the size, and on the other side it doesn't say anything at all. So you want this side out, and you'll have it spinning in the right direction. Now here's where you really got to watch, the length of the screws for the brake disc. These are quite short, they should work. And when you put them in, you want to make sure they're not so long that they rub on the controller. And you can see down in the groove there, you see the silver? That's where the controller is there. So you want to put in a screw or two, tighten it down, and then put a wrench on here and turn it and see how stiff it is. So first I'm just going to loosen this nut off. And I'm going to go over here and get my wrench. Okay, and I'm just going to tighten it on there. And I'm going to turn it. And you hear a jet going by. That's the beauty of working outdoors. I just love to do this outside on a sunny day. But anyway, you can see that it turns quite easily. Okay, so now I'm going to put the brake disc on with a couple of screws. Now I put one screw in, I put it all the way down. You really only need one to test this. Put this on, I can turn this so the screw is not binding on the controller, so these screws are fine. If you find you go to turn it and it's very hard to turn, then the screws are too long and you're going to have to get shorter ones or put washers under the heads. So now I have all six screws in, they're in nice and tight. And I grab the motor and turn it, and it's not catching on anything. It turns very easily, so we're good. Now I'm going to take it over and drop it in the bike. Now that I have this loose, and uh, I put the screws back in here with the washers so I don't lose them, but now that I have it loose, the wheel dropped right into place, and I have two washers on the inside. Now before I put the washers on, and I just want to point something out here, there's a recess here with a lip around it, and that lip is called lawyer lips. And what that does is the original nut that was on there is quite small. And when it was tightened all the way down, it fit right in that groove so that it would have to loosen quite a bit for the axle to actually fall out. But with an e-bike motor, the washers and the nuts are much bigger, so they fit over top and they don't fit in those lawyer lips. So what we have for that is you should check your bike before you order parts. If you get a torque arm, it comes with what's called a sea washer. And if you only get one, you should get an additional sea washer to go on the other side. And what this does is it fits over the axle and it slides all the way down. It'll take a little bit to work it down there because, you know, they're made just perfectly to fit. But once it's all the way down there, it'll sit inside those lawyer lips and have the same effect of holding the wheel in place. And then you put your regular washer, you know, up against it. Right? Or in this case, actually a tabbed washer because it's the outside washer. So you put the tabbed washer on it after and tighten it down. The problem I'm having here is when the disc caliper is on the brake disc, you can see it's on there, I have a gap between the mount here and the mount here. So if I go to put a screw through there, there's quite a bit of space here I have to build out and this screw is too short. So I went down to my favorite local bicycle shop and I got some, some uh, longer screws. So that'll definitely solve the length problem. Got some spacer washers here. So, oh, and I also got some uh, longer brake disc screws. So the black one is the one I had originally and I've got some silver ones that are longer. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the wheel off. I'm gonna build the disc out a bit. Take these screws out, put some washers in behind it, build the disc this way a little bit. And then I'm gonna put some washers in between here. You know, I'm gonna put the long screw through there and build out some washers in there. I've managed to get washers in between the disc and the motor under each screw. I put two washers in between all the way around. I gotta say it's definitely a test of your patience to do that, but it's done. And very importantly, you can see, and I pointed this out earlier, but still, you can see there's a wire in there that holds, it's a clip that holds the wire in place. And that prevents the motor from rubbing on the wire when it's spinning. So make sure you have that clip. And again, if you ever lose it, you can always use a zip tie in there nice and tight. And now we've got the two washers, the bike fork itself. It's inside there. You can barely see it, but there's a uh, C washer sitting in the lawyer lips, the nuts on. And now I'm going to take a zip tie, you know, simple zip tie. And I'm going to tie this right on there tight. And that'll keep any tension that ever catches on this cable here instead of coming in and popping that clip off. So I'm going to put a zip tie right there. This may seem like the simplest, most obvious thing, but a lot of people don't do it. 
and this is definitely preventing a problem. A little forethought. I might even put a second zip on there. There seems to be a lot of room. So there we go. Now I have two holding that cable on. And the reason I'm doing that is this is going to be a bike for running through the bush. And if you're catching the cables on trees or branches or anything like that, you don't want the, the pull of the cable to go beyond here and pop that clip off. So just, and, and of course I put these, this is the bottom of the axle so you can't see the zips and I'm just going to snip them off here. When you're spacing things out like this, where you're going to be putting this, uh, this is normally attached onto there, and you're going to be spacing it back by adding washers on the length of the bolt. You really have to take into consideration the length of the uh, amount of thread that you have left on the bolt itself. It has to go through that and then come into the caliper itself. So that's quite a distance. Maybe a little frustrating at times to get the four washers I'm doing here, which is a lot, but uh, I'm probably going to use a longer. Uh, well, maybe not. Actually, it does seem to be quite a bit on there. It looks like it's going to grab the whole thing. But anyway, uh, you really got to take a lot of care and not drop these on the ground or whatever. And I know you'll do it a few times. Now, you can see I've already caught on to it and I have a lot of space here left. So this is going to go quite a ways in on the thread there. So it's going to be good. I've got the bottom four washers in, in place here and the top ones. Now it's a matter of tightening this down securely. Now they're on tight. So time to mount this. You can see the shape of the holes here. They're a lot longer than they are wide. That's so you have some adjustment when you go to put it on. So now the caliper is mounted on the mounting bracket, but I still have it loose. These screws here are not tight yet. And what I've done is I've actually loosened up the pedal, or I'm uh, sorry, the brake lever, so it's straight up and down. And when you push it, of course, you can see that this tightens up onto the disc, right? So I'm just going to use my standard method of putting my foot on the brake lever and then tightening these two up. I've got a torque arm here. This one is used. It's from another bike that I had before. You know, they're normally a little shinier when they're new, but they still serve the purpose. I'm going to mount it on like that. Adjust it here and hose clamp it to the wheel like that so it gets a nice right angle on the axle and this keeps it from rocking in the dropout. So I'm just going to line up the torque arm on there and I'm going to put a, a hose clamp in this one and this one, the first one and the third one. So I'm just going to eyeball where I want some tape right here and right up there and protect it. So these are the spare washers we sell on the website if you need them for this kind of situation and they're incredibly well made and they fit on there so snug they're so precision it's incredible sometimes you can't even get them all on and you have to put the washer on and you have to put the nut on and push it forward to get it on there because those are so snug but now we have a washer on the inside the fork of the bike a washer on the inside there which is sitting in the lawyer's lip and then the torque arm, then another washer, and then a nut. I've got the wheel all bolted down securely. And the next thing to do is to deal with the wiring. I just have to zip tie it up the fork there and bring it up here to the handlebars where I'm going to put the controls on now. So I find to remove the brake levers, the easiest thing to do is to loosen the cable off down at the brake caliper here or the V-brakes, whatever you have, and where that cable would run up to the front. Into here. It'll be nice and slack so you can slide this out and then you can get in here and you can pull that thing outside and unhook the brake lever. Now when we get up to the handlebars I mounted the golden motor brake levers on here. I put one on each side of course. The writing goes up for your left and right. It really doesn't matter though but it just looks nicer this side up. 
And here's the cruise control button and a horn. If you hook up a horn, that's an optional item you can get on the website. Uh, I have the three lights for the throttle. Uh, the, this is uh, to tell you how much power you have remaining. It's kind of unreliable because, you know, modern batteries keep the same voltage right to the end of the charge. And uh, you really need something like a cycle analyst, something that counts amp hours if you want an actual count of how much battery power you have left. And the throttle I put on the left side, a lot of people don't like that, but this bike's got a shift on, on this side in the grip. And uh, this side here has no shifter, so I put the throttle over there. It's just a cleaner setup. And uh, when you have uh, shifters like this, generally I change these to click shifters, you know, which you can push one lever and it goes up in gear and then push another lever and it goes down. It seems to work in better with this stuff. But in this case, this is going to work well with the shifter on one side, throttle on the other. Put the hose clamps on nice and neat. It looks really good. Uh, the wire from the motor is on the other side here, and it runs up all along the frame here. This is for the battery, and as I made a connection right here. There's two wires that come from the cradle here. This goes up, and I connected the two wires from the cradle to the two wires going to the motor. And you should also make sure your battery is out of the cradle when you do this, because the battery is always live. And if you want to turn your bike off, you just take the battery out. So when I connected these, I used household morettes. I always use these because I change everything so much. If you've watched my videos, you can see different motors on the same bikes many, many times. I have a lot of bikes and a lot of motors on different bikes. But anyway, when I mount them in here to keep the water out, I tend to put one like, like this and one like this above each other. And that way, if they ever get any moisture in there, it just drips out. And then I wrap them up really good with black electrical tape. There's another option that, that a lot of people like to use. Uh, if they don't want to take the battery out, you know, to turn it off. You could just use uh, something like these. These are XT90 connectors. You know, there's a male and a female of these. You can see that the wires are very thick as opposed to what would be on the bike. It just goes to show uh, how much overkill these are than what you need. So after you get it mounted and you have it wired up, you know, you just drop the battery in the cradle, like so. There's a key on the other side there. It locks down in place. When you put the battery on, you should always tug it really good to make sure it's locked in place. Now you can see I have the wheel centered nicely. Everything's connected, the battery's back on. And that's how to build a fat bike, a Schwinn Diggity. Picked up a Canadian tire, nice and cheap. Very similar ones are available at uh, Walmart as well in the USA. I forget what they call them. But we have a Magic Pi 5 on there on a fat bike. And time for some fun. Gary Sallow, Golden Motor Canada. Thanks for watching.